Hello, my name is Catherine Dong, and I worked in Dr. Dara Baldwin's Cambodia Project Lab. My research project is about monitoring infant neurodevelopment via the Hammersmith Neurological Examinations in Cambodian Infants at Risk for Simon Deficiency. Simon is an essential micronutrient in plasma or whole blood, and it is present in the body as free simon, as well as in several phosphorylated forms. Simon functions in multiple ways in the body, such as participating in metabolic processes and neurotransmitter synthesis. It can only be stored in insignificant amounts and has a short half-life, so it must be consumed frequently through foods such as whole grains, yeast, meats, legumes, and nuts. In Cambodia, people heavily rely on vitamin B, poor white rice diet, and there is a lack of dietary variation there, which makes it challenging to, to consume enough simon for the body's demands. When mothers are simon deficient, they produce simon poor milk, which places offspring at high risk for simon deficiency and other adverse outcomes. And 70 to 100% of infants and 27 to 100% of reproductive age women in Cambodia are simon deficient. There are some possibilities for simon fortification, such as fish sauce and salt. However, there is currently no fortification program for simon that exists in Cambodia. There is growing evidence that simon deficiency can also result in long-term cognitive impairments in childhood cognitive and motor abilities. The period immediately after birth seems to have the greatest cerebral vulnerability to maternal simon deficiency. And based on some human infant studies, it is now widely established that less severe cases of infant child simon deficiency can be treated to varying degrees with early simon supplementation. So for my research, it was a double blind for our four parallel arm randomized control trial among Latin women and their newborn infants. And mother infant parents were randomly assigned to one of the four treatment groups, a control, a 1.2 milligrams per day group, a 2.4 milligrams per day group, and a 10 milligrams per day group. And in each treatment group, the women were asked to consume one capsule daily between two and 24 weeks postnatal. And my research utilizes the Hammersmith Neurological Examinations, which are a field standard tool for assessing infants' neurological status between two weeks and 24 months. So there are two types of Hammersmith Neurological Examinations. One of them is a Hammersmith Neonatal Neurological Examination, also known as HNNE, and it's done on infants from birth to two months two months old, and it consists of six categories that include tone, tone patterns, reflexes, spontaneous movements, abnormal signs, and behavior. And the other Hammersmith examination is Hammersmith's Infant Neurological Examination, also known as HINE, and it's done on two months to 24 months infants and consists of 24 34 items and six categories, which are the same as the H and E. And throughout this presentation, I will collectively refer to these examinations as Hammersmiths. So there have been many applications of Hammersmiths for evaluating term and preterm infants, as well as infants with neurological conditions. However, there are currently no studies using the Hammersmiths to monitor effects of malnutrition or micronutrient deficiencies such as simon deficiency. Therefore, the purpose of my research is to determine the extent to which low-dose simon supplementation for Latin Cambodian mothers affected their breastfed infant's neurological status as measured by their Hammersmith scores on the Hammersmiths. So, my research questions were, to what extent did infants display progress in their hind scores from 12 to 52 weeks? To what extent were infants' gross metrics at two weeks associated, were associated with their Hammersmith scores? And to what extent did low-dose maternal simon supplementation affect infants' Hammersmith scores? And I predicted that infants' hind scores would display evidence for neuro developmental progress from 12 to 52 weeks 
And I also hypothesize that infant's gross metrics at two weeks would be associated with their Hammersmith scores. And specifically, I predicted that higher gross metrics at two weeks would be significantly correlated with higher Hammersmith scores at 2, 12, 24, and 52 weeks postnatal. And finally, I hypothesized that low-dose maternal silence supplementation would benefit infant's neurological status based on some previous evidence of Simon's importance in neurological development. So I predicted a dose response relationship between maternal Simon supplementation dose and infant's high scores at 24 weeks and 52 weeks. So the subjects in this study were 335 healthy mother and baby pairs from Kampong Tong province of Cambodia. And the criteria for the study were or um, the mother's most recent pregnancy had to be normal. The infant was born without any complications. The mother's not taking nor having taken Simon consuming supplements over the past four months. And the mother is not currently participating in any nutrition programs beyond normal care. So for the h &E, it was only performed at two weeks and it consisted of five categories that were administered in the following order. And uh, similarly for the hind, it was performed at 12 weeks, 24 weeks, and 52 weeks. And there were 12 items and four categories with the corresponding items performed in the following order. So overall, the study investigated relationships between maternal Simon supplementation and indicators of infant's growth, such as your weight, height, and head circumference, as well as possible benefits of maternal Simon supplementation for infant's Hammersmith scores. So based on these histograms right here, infant's average hind scores increased across time points, meaning that they exhibited um, neurodevelopment. However, um, there were no such differences observed between the treatment groups, and I performed a one-way ANOVA examining two weeks h &E scores, and there were no significant main effects of treatment group. And additionally, for answer metrics at two weeks, um, based on this figure right here, the infant Z-score gross metrics indicated substantial gross reductions relative to uh, WHO norms when measured at two weeks. And However, there were no statistically significant differences that occurred in any of these gross metrics for infants in the four treatment groups. And additionally, I performed another ANCO that examined both time point and treatment group with baseline H N E as a covariate. And I, based off these analyses, I found that the hind scores increased significantly across time points, um, but treatment group had no significant impact on Hammersmith scores. And as you can see here in this graph, like the average Hind scores increased over time, but there was just like no significant difference between the groups. I did, and also I performed some correlations, and one of the correlations was between the infants' Hammersmith scores and their anthropometric measures. And I found that anthropometrics were significantly positively associated with the two week, 12 week, and 24 week Hammersmith scores denoted by the stars on a graph, but none of these answer metrics were significantly associated with the high scores at 52 weeks. The other correlation I performed was between the H and E and the Hein and at 12, 24, and 52 weeks. And the H and E and Hein scores at 12 and 24 weeks showed a significant difference, but at the 52 weeks, there was no significant difference. And finally, I performed two multiple regressions to examine the extent to which several predictors were systematically associated with 24-week Hammersmith scores and 52-week Hammersmith scores. So for the 24 weeks, the multiple regression revealed an overall significant model and, um, the individual beta coefficients were statistically significant for baseline Z-scored weight and baseline H and E, but none of the other 
individual beta coefficients were statistically significant, but overall, neither maternal simon dosage during the clinical trial nor the mother's baseline milk simon levels were significantly associated with the infant's 24-week neurocognitive performance on the Hammersmith score. And for the 52 weeks, there is a significant relationship between infants' access to simon and their neurocognitive function of 50 two weeks. And this result is worth noticing because it's the only hint in the data set that I've yet seen in which Simon seems to show a relationship with Hammersmith's neurological function. So um, my research findings further highlight previous evidence that many infants growing up in rural Cambodia experienced delayed growth, in, at least in relation to the WHO norms. And my research also provided the first investigation ever to examine possible relationships between the infant's access to simon via maternal supplementation and their neurological function measured by the Hammersmiths. So some of the limitations were that um, my research utilized modified versions of the Hammersmiths examination. So for instance, cranial nerve function, which was part of the Hine was not included, and some of these items could indicate an infant's sensory and motor skills. So therefore, um, the Hammersmith scores in this study may not entirely reflect an infant's neurocognitive status. Additionally, I cannot determine the degree of reliability in the researchers' Hammersmith scoring. So the Hammersmith score sessions were not videotaped in a degree to which the Hammersmith scores in the study may have been affected by researcher implementation variability and other factors affecting scoring reliability isn't known. And we should also be cautious about concluding definitively that Simon's implementation could have no effect on neurocognitive development. Therefore, more research should be performed. So overall, in the present study, breastfed Cambodian infants showed marked delays in growth metrics relative to WHO norms, and low-dose maternal thymus supplementation did not appear to affect infants' Hammersmith scores in the study, and these findings raise a need for further investigation of these important developmental issues. And overall, my research underscores the importance of interventions to protect infants' health and growth in the Southeast Asia region.